the U.S. And uh, that's when I met Phil and Nate, you know, about a week or two after I moved to the U.S. And my idea of punk rock was, you know, late 70s British stuff and Argentine punk bands. I had no idea about anything, no hardcore from the U.S., nothing like that. So they took me to go see Fugazi at the old Citadel Center in D.C. with a band called Geek and this go-go band. And that show really blew me away because it was the first time I, I saw a punk band that had really good songs that could really play their instruments and that was it was super exciting and energetic and new and different. And uh, at least for me, this is like end of 89 or something. That for me was really new at the time. And especially uh, Brendan Canny's drumming, that really impressed me because I was, you know, 17 years old and uh, that was like, you know, really opened my eyes that show that you could play music like that, that had the energy of the punk stuff I'd listened to before, but was so much more sophisticated in a way. I really liked that and that was a, that was a really great show. Start by uh, start by showing the building there. Right. Yeah. Am I introducing myself, by the way? I'm Ian. That's my high school, Wilson High School, here in Washington D.C. It's a public school. Uh, I graduated in 1980, and uh, I spent a couple of years in this school arguing with my friends about sort of the relative rock worthiness of band, certain bands. I was definitively in the Ted Nugent camp, this is 1978, and they were telling me about the Ramones. I thought Nugent definitely would have rocked harder than the Ramones, but the fact of the matter was, I had never listened to the Ramones. So they lent me a bunch of records, the Ramones, the Dan Am, the Sex Pistols, the Clash, um, Generation X, and I took them home, and this music scared the shit out of me. At first it didn't make any sense to me at all, this music, but eventually, I started to hear it, I started to understand it. And the fact that it scared me, it was intriguing. It made me want to hear more and try to get some idea of what, what was this all about. Eventually, <clears throat> kids here told me about this benefit um, for a radio station down in Georgetown that had been shut down. There was gonna be a big protest, and that night there would be a benefit show for the radio station to try to save it. And it was a band called The Cramps. This is in January or February of 1979. Up to that point, I'd only seen really arena gigs. I'd only seen like rock gigs. It was cool. Ted Nugent was good live. He was, he was hard. But when I went to go see the Cramps that night, what I saw in that room completely changed the way I ever thought about music. Because they were so close. They were, there was no barrier. The room was packed with people. Every walk of life, every different kind of crazy person was in that room. And the cramps were so visceral. And I don't think they had gotten half a set done before Lux just threw up all over everything. Supposedly he'd eaten a pizza and like a case of, had a case of beer or something. The kind of reaction the crowd had was just, it was mind blowing. I, mean, I was of course terrified. I was completely freaked out by it. But when I left there, I felt like something had occurred. And at that point I thought, this is where I want to be. That's when I knew the Ramones rocked harder than Ted Nugent. That's when I realized that all this music that people have been talking about actually, it actually had some kind of quality or texture that was worth pursuing. A few months later, I went to go see the Dam play. And opening for them was the Bad Brains, who were from here in Washington. And that was the first time that I realized that right here in our own city, you could have a band that, of course, in my opinion, I think many other people's opinion was the greatest band in the world in 1980. There was no other band better than them. Their sort of accentuation on just doing things and just going for it and completely being free and just rocking so hard, it was so inspiring to all the kids here that we learned right away to never take no for an answer and just to, to build and to keep going. And now it's 22 years later.